iPads and stuff, you know, and they, they look at the words and shit. I've never done that in my life and I never will. 
I figure you're robbing the crowd. You gotta learn your stuff, apparently. It's a song called Who's Your Daddy? It's um quite a personal song really, but it's, I guess at the bottom line of it is it's a it's about the dear old dad who spends more time down the pub than with his kids. And um, I can remember my dad, he used to spend a lot of time at the pub. In fact, uh, he used to go from his, his journey on an afternoon uh, every day was to drink in Melbourne where he worked. Then he'd catch the train back to McKinnon Station where he'd go to the McKinnon pub and drink more. And mum used to go and pick him up in the car but she used to put the dog in the front seat of the car so he had to sit in the back. <laughs> this is true. And then he'd grab, you know, three or four or five bottles of, uh, you know, back in the day when you had long necks and, uh, you know, grab some of those for, for dinner. With a salad, of course, you know. <laughs> and always used to fozzic through his pockets, you know, looking for something. You know, as a kid, you think, oh, maybe Dad bought me a lolly or something. No such chance, I'm afraid. Ripped up TAB tickets, you couldn't eat those. <laughs> Song called Who's Your Daddy? Now, who's your daddy now? Who's your daddy now? 
nice, people listening and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> This is a new song, so it could go wrong. <laughs> Haven't recorded it either yet, so hope you like it. <laughs> you haven't heard it yet. Oh, I'm getting <laughs> <laughs> Everything else is great, so how can I go wrong? Great stuff. Oh, I couldn't go horribly wrong, trust me. <laughs> my my, my uh, darling wife, she, uh, she uh, her dad was a truck driver. And um, when she was a little girl, she used to tell a lovely, fond, a fond story of how she used to run out, well, not literally run out of the Pacific, she used to by the side of the Pacific Highway in a little nighty, little white nighty she used to wear to bed and, and wait for her dad to sort of roll up and in the truck, you know. And he used to roll up in the truck. And her dad had a bit of a checkered life. <laughs> he was a naughty boy on the road, apparently. This song called The Truck Driver's Daughter, because she too, like I, used to hope that maybe Dad had something, a little something for you, you know, because you hadn't seen him for a while. Again, she, she dipped out too. <laughs> this song called The Truck Driver's Daughter, here we go. fellows were working on the Church Street Bridge in uh, Melbourne across the Yarra River. Familiar with it? Anybody? 
Yeah, Old Bridges in Melbourne were modelled on those that went across the Thames in, in London. And, uh, anyway, they're doing cement repair work because the bridge tends to fall to bits. Anyway, uh, as they're chipping away, the glass shards came flying out from everywhere. So they stopped and, uh, and then they just got a little chisel and gently nudged around it. And, well, they revealed the bottle of all things. Somebody had cemented a bottle into the bridge. Carayo whiskey bottle too. Of all things, who'd thunk it? Anyway, um, they pulled the bottle out and, and inside the bottle there was three bits of paper. And uh, the first one when they pulled it out just went like that into thin air. The second one they pulled it out was actually a conscription notice from 1940. And, um, the third letter, which was the most fascinating one, was um, written by two guys who were working on the Church Street Bridge at the time in 1940, around the turn of World War II. And uh, both of them had served in World War I. And uh, they wrote this incredible letter. You know, it was the most poignant letter about you know, equality and, and you know, fair go to everybody and equal wages and equal rights. It was amazing you know, for something at the time. And obviously they popped it in there hoping, just hoping that maybe when it was ever found, or if it was ever found, God knows how it would be found when it was cemented into a bridge. Um, you know, they weren't thinking too hard on that level, but uh, um, somebody did find it. But uh, yeah, they were thinking that maybe, just maybe the world had changed, you know? Unfortunately, it hadn't. But one of the guys who wrote the letter was my grandfather. Um, so this letter that was found in 2011, found me in 2017. Wow. Um, you know, so another 77 years later. And I wish I had the letter with me so I could read it to you because it's quite phenomenal, really, you know, for two guys, Joe Eagles and Colin Ellis. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, so this is a story about the, the letter, ladies and gentlemen. Pray. 
cement to work our heart and hand and this message in a bottle we left for you to find may all be equal fair and right with peace on earth this time together for Mr. Marsh over there. Yeah. Just remember that uh, Rory's got albums for sale up here. Oh, hang on, that's mine. Um, <laughs> but uh, yes, we're not into shameless marketing or anything like that, so um, yeah. Rory's got about 15 of them, so... Wow. Oh, dear. They're all on Spotify, by the way, but, you know, you, you wouldn't use that. Who uses Spotify I, here? I do. Shame. <laughs> <laughs> you cheapskate. <laughs> <laughs> do you know how much we get paid for Spotify? Zero, zero, one percent. One percent, less than a percent. For, for each, I uh, think for each string, it's point zero zero four cents. <laughs> so you've got to sell a lot. about a thousand streams to make a dollar. <laughs> but more than that, more than four thousand streams. Yeah. Five thousand. Yeah. That should be part of that list. <laughs> I do my album. Like, you know, it's here comes the self justification bit. <laughs> You do that on Facebook, it's amazing how everybody starts to self-justify themselves. I buy records! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, got you. Um, we've got a car, Bruno. 